I don't have any data to back this up, but I suspect that one of the reasons that the SM7B is so popular is just because it's a cool ass looking microphone. Sure, sure nail the proportions on this one. Something that they're not exactly nailing with either the MV7, this dorky thing, or even the SM7DB. It's matte black, there's no obvious branding, the XLR coming out of the bottom or the top, depending on how you have it mounted. It's just one of a kind, and in my opinion, a huge part of its appeal. Which brings me to the Earthworks ethos. There hasn't been a broadcast style mic that's spoken to me like the SM7B until this one. It's SM7B-like in its simplicity. Industrial, unadorned, cylinder. There's even a matte black version too, but in my opinion, the polished metal version gives it the character and distinctiveness that puts it in the cool kids class along with the SM7B. All right, that's enough of me struggling to talk about design aesthetics. The text on the bottom of the screen says SM7B plus bass roll off because I neglected to switch off the bass roll off switch. So that is what you're hearing for the first five minutes of this video is the SM7B plus the bass roll off switch, which is engaged. The bass roll off meaning the low cut filter, or the high pass filter, however you want to phrase it. That means that the low frequencies at about 300 hertz and below are being reduced. After the five minute mark, everything you're gonna hear out of the SM7B is in its flat response. I do explain why I have the bass roll off switch engaged on the SM7B. It is a mistake, but at least now you get a pretty decent chunk of audio samples with that switch engaged, if you are curious. Another interesting thing about these microphones that sets them apart from the crowd is how they're mounted. The SM7B has this yoke mounted design, which is very common for this broadcast style dynamic microphone genre of microphones, but it's distinct in that it has a separate XLR cable that's not coming out of the back of the mic. It gives it a very clean look, allowing the cable to be routed right down or right up the mount, however you have it mounted. One really nice thing about this mount is that the little screw or this little nut that actually tightens it down onto the mount is completely independent of the yoke and of the microphone. So you don't have to spin the entire thing around to tighten it. It's those little details, aside from the way it looks and of course the way it sounds, that elevates it above the crowd. Earthworks has something that's unique in terms of microphones, at least in my experience, in that it comes with this ball mount. So this gives you the flexibility and the ability to just position this, angle this, spin it around however you need to, to get it set up for you, regardless of what kind of mount you have it on, what kind of stand you have it on. You can put the ball mount on the stand without the microphone. You can loosen up everything independently, tighten it down, and you don't have to spin the whole thing around. And again, you just have this complete flexibility of mounting this however you need to. The purpose of this video is to compare these two microphones. They're very comparable microphones. Same price, same intended use case, same kind of target audience. In my opinion, they both look really good. How a microphone looks is not as important as how it sounds, but it is a crucial factor in selecting the right microphone. If you're doing a video component to whatever it is you're recording, then I think what's on video, what's in front of the camera, should look good. Whatever good means to you, I don't know. Is it cool looking? Is it interesting looking? Is it unique somehow? Whatever floats your boat. These two microphones with their industrial simplicity, the fact that there's no obvious branding that's in your face, their very elegant proportions, they both just look really good. But how do they sound? So you're obviously listening to both of these microphones. I'm running them into the Rodecaster Duo and I'm recording a multi-track. So I can switch back and forth between the microphones in post. I'm not gonna switch back and forth rapidly. I'll probably go 30 seconds to a minute of each microphone before I switch to the other one. This is only for spoken word. I don't sing, I don't play any instruments. I am very uncool, unlike these microphones. The problem that a lot of people have had with the SM7B is that it's a very quiet microphone. It needs a lot of gain to get a good signal from the microphone. How do you get that gain? You can get it from the interface. Whatever you're plugging this microphone into to record or to take the signal from the microphone and put it into something that can record like your computer. Up until recently, most of the interfaces that people were using for this use case did not provide anywhere near enough gain, hence why people were using something like the Cloudlifter or any other kind of mic activator, inline preamp, whatever you wanna call, them to give the SM7B an additional 25 to 30 dB of gain on top of whatever your interface could provide it. That's one solution. Another is that interfaces themselves have evolved to provide more gain built in to the interface. This one in particular, the Rodecaster Duo or the Rodecaster Pro 2, can provide more than 70 dB of gain right from the interface which is more than enough that you need typically for something like the SM7B, negating the need for 
something like this. The third solution is the SM7DB. You can just buy that microphone. It should sound very much the same, if not exactly the same as the SM7B, but has an inline activator built into it. But what about the ethos? How much gain do you need to power this microphone? Well, about half as much as you need to power the SM7B because the ethos is a condenser microphone. A condenser mic requires power and by virtue of it being, I don't know, electrified, I guess in a sense, it doesn't require anywhere near as much gain as a dynamic mic does. Running both of these microphones into the Rodecaster Duo, the Earthworks running into channel one, and I have it set to 32 dB of gain. And over here in channel two, I've got the SM7B and it's running at 63 dB of gain. So just under twice as much gain required for the SM7B as the Ethos. Neither one is receiving any processing either inside the Rodecaster Duo, nor will I do any processing in post-production. You're just gonna hear how these microphones sound right out of the microphone. I messed up a little bit. Another feature of the SM7B or the SM7DB for that matter, is that it actually has some frequency response switches built into the microphone. I had the low cut or the bass roll off filter engaged, which is actually rolling off low frequencies, I think at around 300 Hertz and below. That's something that I typically do with the SM7B for my voice because I've gotten comments in the past on my videos. I don't know about complaining, but mentioning how bassy they are. And that's a quality that you'll get from both of these microphones is a very robust low end response. So I did have the low cut filter engaged on the SM7B up until this point, and now I have switched it into its completely flat profile. In addition to that bass roll off or low cut filter, there is a presence boost switch on the SM7B as well to give it a little bit more emphasis in some of the higher frequencies. The Ethos does not have any physical switches, so any kind of boost or cuts that you wanna do to the frequency response have to be done either in your interface if that's possible or in post-production. Aside from the ball mount and the windscreen, there's nothing really that comes with the Ethos. The SM7B has this slimmer windscreen and it also comes with this much puffier, thicker windscreen and it comes with a stand adapter to take it from 3 8 to 5 8 It also does have a plate that you can screw onto the back if you want to just cover up those switches. I never even took mine out of the bag. Speaking of windscreens, I think both of these are very instrumental in shaping how these microphones sound and how you address them, essentially. I'm just taking them off real quick, you can see that there is another windscreen underneath here, but the actual capsule of this microphone is quite a bit down from the front of the microphone. So you're actually moved away just by virtue of the design of this microphone several inches from the capsule. Same thing with the Ethos. It's a completely different microphone. It's very tiny. This is pretty much half of the microphone itself. And this windscreen is even more intense than the one on the SM7B. It's denser, thicker, and it actually has another sort of like barrier like halfway down that is further filtering the frequencies coming into the microphone. So this microphone, like the SM7B, is pushing you away from it quite a bit by virtue of the design of its windscreen. And now you can hear how they sound without them. These windscreens are doing a lot to protect them from plosives, so let's do that real quick. Peter Piper prefers the pod mic for podcasts. Peter Piper prefers the pod mic for podcasts. And now let's do the plosive comparison with the included windscreens. Peter Piper prefers the pod mic for podcasts. Peter Piper prefers the pod mic for podcasts. I've been sitting about five to six inches away from the front of the windscreen of these microphones, and you now know that that's another s several inches away from the actual capsule of each microphone. How do they sound when you get much closer to them? Starting with the SM7B, now I'm just a few inches away from the front of the windscreen, and this is giving you that very deep, bassy, Barry White-esque sound that the ladies just absolutely love until they see my face. And now to do the same for the Earthworks Ethos, I'm just a few inches away from the front of the Ethos and it is very seductive, very sultry until you see the face that is making these noises and you might want to vomit. One's dynamic, one's condenser. But there's another difference. The SM7B has a cardioid pickup pattern and the Ethos has a supercardioid pickup pattern. Supercardioid is a little bit narrower in its sensitivity uh, at the front of the microphone, but it does have a little bit of a disadvantage in that it has 
extra sensitivity in the back of the microphone. So let's hear how they sound when you speak into different sides of them. This is the SM7B at the front, and now this is the SM7B at its side. Now rotating around to the rear three quarters of the SM7B, this is how it sounds. And then speaking into the back of the SM7B, rotating, ar rotating, rotating around to the other three quarters axis, and now to the opposite side of the SM7B, this is how it sounds. And then coming back around to the front of the SM7B, I think it sounds the best from this angle, but you let me know. So this is the Ethos talking into the front of it, should sound pretty good. Now rotating around to the side of the Ethos, talking directly into the side. Now speaking into the rear three quarters of the Ethos, this is how it sounds. And this is the rear of the Ethos speaking directly into the back. And now rotating around to the other three quarters angle of the Ethos. Coming back around to the other side of the Ethos, this is how it sounds. And finally back into the front of the Ethos. How was that for a comparison? One of the other exceptional qualities of the SM7B that makes it worth the added price is it is very good at rejecting handling noise. If I tap on the base of the stand of the SM7B, that's what it sounds like, and then tapping on the stem of the stand, tapping on the yoke of the SM7B itself, and then tapping on the microphone, and then finally tapping on the windscreen, that's what it sounds like. If I were just to grab this microphone and maybe I wanted to adjust the angle and spin it around a little bit, that's how the SM7B sounds. Tapping on the base of the stand, tapping on the stem of the stand, tapping on the ball mount of the microphone itself, tapping on the rear of the mic, and then tapping on the windscreen. How did the Ethos do? Does it stack up against the SM7B? If I were to just loosen this up and then maybe shift this around a little bit, get it positioned, how is that doing? Can you hear that? Is it annoying? Since the SM7B is requiring 63 dB of gain and the Ethos is only requiring 32 dB of gain, I'm just gonna be quiet for about 30 seconds and then we can compare what noise, if any, we're hearing from the interface and from the microphones themselves. As he spoke, the gleam of the side lights of a carriage came around the curve of the avenue. It was a smart little Landau, which rattled up to the door of Briony Lodge. As it pulled up, one of the loafing men at the corner dashed forward to open the door in the hope of earning a copper, but was elbowed away by another loafer, who had rushed up with the same intention. A fierce quarrel broke out which was increased by the two guardsmen who took sides with one of the loungers and by the scissors grinder who was equally hot upon the other side. A blow was struck, and in an instant, the lady who had stepped from her carriage was the center of a little knot of flushed and struggling men who struck savagely at each other with their fists and sticks. Holmes dashed into the crowd to protect the lady. You've heard the comparisons, you've heard all the samples, you've heard how they sound on my wife's voice. What do you think about these two microphones? For me, I'm gonna start using the Ethos more and more and more because I'm a bit of a contrarian. The SM7B is just so everywhere <laughs> and the SM7DB, I think, is going to even to continue that trend. And I just like to have something that's a little bit different. But I wanted to share the Ethos with you. If it's something that you haven't seen yet, if you haven't paid attention to it, I think you really should pay attention to the Ethos. It has some distinct advantages over the SM7B. It doesn't require an expensive interface. It doesn't require any additional mic activator, mic booster, whatever, to get a good signal from it. The Ethos has a little bit more presence and a little bit more clarity because it does have some boosts at high frequencies that the SM7B just doesn't have. Even if you do enable that presence boost, the presence boost frequencies on the SM7B are much lower down on the frequency spectrum than the ones on the Ethos. $400 is nothing to sneeze at. It's obviously more expensive than other microphones that are in this class of microphones like the MV7 or the Rode PodMic, etc. But in the world of microphones, $400 isn't 
even that expensive. You know, there's microphones that cost thousands and thousands of dollars that are used for the same basic purposes of these two microphones, for recording voices, for recording instruments. But if you are stretching to get to that $400 price point just for the microphone, the Ethos is going to allow you to get up and running with a much cheaper interface without the extra equipment that the SM7B would require you to get as well.